housing affordability crisis in 2023 was a big headache for a lot of Aussies. The RBA was relentless in its fight against inflation, which meant that we've just been through the most aggressive rate tightening cycle in the last three decades, with interest rates rising from a low of 0.1% in April of 2022 to its current 4.35%. This has meant that, according to the latest CoreLogic Housing Affordability Report, the portion of income required to service a new home loan has risen to 46.2%. Now to put that into context, if you've ever asked your parents about what they paid for their house and it seems ridiculously cheap, well, it's not just inflation that makes it seem cheap. House prices in Sydney averaged near 27,500 in 1970, which would be worth about 250,000 at today's prices. So that's obviously adjusted for inflation. Now for comparison, the current median value of house prices in Sydney is around 1.1 million. To be fair, we do have a lot more double income households now than they did in the 70s. But still, Australian housing is expensive. If you're renting, you definitely didn't avoid the pain either. On average, across all capital cities, rents have risen by an average of 10% over the last 12 months, taking the medium rent up to $616 per week. Perth was the worst, with rents jumping by 13.2%. This jump in rentals has largely been driven by a housing shortage. Australia's population has increased by approximately 600,000 people over the last year, while dwelling approvals have been sluggish at only 167,000. So we have this concoction of more people and less houses. So even though we have high interest rates, which is actually negative for property prices because it impacts affordability, House prices over the last 12 months have actually been quite strong, with most capital cities recording gains over the last 12 months. Again, Perth has led the charge with a medium house price increasing by 15.3% over the last 12 months. But all of this data is now in the past. The real question that we wanna answer is, what is gonna happen in 2024? And that's what we're gonna be exploring in today's video. Now, before we jump in, just a quick word of caution, and that is, you shouldn't be basing your financial decisions on predictions. Things are constantly changing, everything's in flux, and so predictions are often wrong, and what actually plays out can be vastly different to what we predict will happen today. That's why economists still get paid despite being wrong a lot of the time. So base your decisions on your financial plan, not on what you predict is gonna happen with things outside your control. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor. Welcome back to the channel for another video and this is my first video for 2024. Now, it is my goal this year to put out a lot more useful, valuable content for you guys. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. But right now we are talking about Australia's property market for the coming calendar year. Kicking off 2024, housing affordability in Australia is gonna be largely driven by two key factors. And this is the same factors that impact the price of pretty much every asset out there. And that is supply and demand. And the underlying drivers or the key drivers that are gonna impact supply and demand this year are likely going to be interest rates, population growth, economic outlook, and the construction industry. So let's have a look at some of those factors in a little more detail. It is largely expected that interest rates are going to start to ease in the second half of 2024. As an example, Commonwealth Bank is expecting significant drops with their prediction of six interest rates cuts in 2024, which would reduce the cash rate by 0.75% by the year's end. I can just hear the sigh of relief from homeowners out there. When interest rates fall, it means that buying a house with debt becomes more affordable because lower interest rates increases your serviceability. And this is positive for house prices. However, just because interest rates drop doesn't necessarily guarantee that house prices are gonna rise. You have to remember that interest rates are still gonna be significantly higher than they were two years ago. And there are still some people out there that are either drawing down on savings in order to meet the additional demands on their cash flow, or still relying on a very low fixed rate both of which are not sustainable situations. For renters, when interest rates fall, it typically attracts more investors into the property market. And so this means that there's gonna be a larger supply of houses on the market, which should help to stabilize the price of rents. 
We know that in 2023, a lot of the housing crisis was driven by an increase in population growth. And that was largely thanks to an increase in migration with the reopening of the world post the pandemic. On the 11th of December, 2023, the Labor government released their much anticipated migration strategy, of which a number of new measures will be implemented in 2024. The government is expecting these new measures to help normalize migration levels. With migration normalizing, this could help to reduce the gap between new entrants into Australia and housing supply, or in other words, less people coming in means less demand for property, which should help to stabilise property prices and also stabilise rental costs. Also, people are starting to become much savvier with their living arrangements. During the pandemic, the average number of people living in a house reduced from 2.55 to 2.49 in 2023. Now that the world has opened up again and housing is scarce, there is a potential that this trend will reverse and we'll start seeing more people in each household. The savvy property investors call this house hacking. The number of new home sales across Australia fell in 2023. This will likely see the volume of homes commencing construction continue to contract into 2024 resulting in the lowest number of new house commencements since 2012. Also, the construction industry is doing it tough with the highest number of job redundancies compared with other industries and increasing company insolvencies. This actually indicates that Australia's housing crisis may continue to worsen in 2024 because without a strong construction industry, there's gonna be less houses, which means less supply, which is gonna keep house prices elevated and rental costs elevated. However, it would be interesting to see how quickly this could turn around if we do get that reduction in interest rates. The recent and relentless rise in interest rates has one key agenda, and that is to slow things down to get inflation under control. And it appears that it is working. Inflation fell from its high of 7.8% in December 2022 to its current 5.4%. We are yet to see just how much these recent interest rate increases are gonna impact economic growth. Are we facing a situation where interest rates have increased just enough in order to bring inflation down without slowing down the economy too much? Or are we currently sitting on the cliff of a large recession? This is what's referred to as a hard or a soft landing. If a recession does hit, well then that's where we could get the hard landing scenario. And during a recession, generally what happens is people start to lose their jobs, so unemployment increases, wages tend to fall, and this negatively impacts house prices along with a lot of other asset prices. As people will start to become distressed sellers, put properties on the market as they search for cheaper accommodation. On the other hand, if a recession doesn't hit and we are at the peak of the rate cycle, well then property could actually become more affordable as interest rates drop, employment remains strong, wages remain strong, that's all positive for property prices. At the moment, it's all just a bit of a guessing game. The truth is that nobody knows where property prices are heading in 2024. We've looked at some of the key data, some of it suggesting that the housing crisis is actually going to worsen, and some of it suggesting that the housing crisis is going to ease. If I were a betting man, which I'm not, then I would predict that in 2024, certain states are probably gonna soften a little and certain states are gonna do better and remain fairly strong. So for instance, if you compare Perth property market with that of say Melbourne and Sydney, well, Perth is still comparatively much more affordable than those other cities. And you couple that with the mining industry that we have here in the WA, and that creates a lot more demand for housing. But of course, that's just a guess. Like I said at the start of this video, don't base your financial decisions on speculation. Base your financial decisions on your financial plan. And if you don't have a financial plan, you need to get a financial plan. And we do offer services around that, so feel free to check out our website in the description box below. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for new videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.